Good morning, everybody. Go ahead and take your seat. So thanks for coming for the Joe Fest. I first want to start by thanking uh, Eva and Don for all the hard work uh, they've done to pull this together. I don't know, where, where are they? Are they outside working? Oh, there's Eva. Where's Don? Don, Don's working, okay. Um, so let's start with a round of applause for them for pulling this off. Uh, when they first approached me, I said, of course, and then we had long negotiations about how to manage the event. Um, uh, but I think we ended up in a really great spot. Uh, it's wonderful to have the rain. If all goes well, we'll test the canopy tonight. Uh, for those of you who have been here before, uh, it'll be a great test. Uh, it's uh, hard to imagine a better colleague than Joe, but I have uh, five of them here as permanent members. Um, Joe is one of the many ones that convinced me to come years ago saying, it'll be easy, Lars, you just sit in your office and think all day. You see what happened to me. Uh, um, so what I want to do briefly is uh, I'm going to hand this over to Omer, who's going to say a few things from the department perspective, and then I'll go through the normal slightly modified protocols so that all of you know how to behave while you're here, though I think all of you have been here before. So that'll be brief, but uh, Jesse encouraged me to modify, modify it for fun. So let me quickly hand this over to Omer Blaze, who is the former chair of the physics department. Yeah, the current chair, unfortunately, is, is traveling and so couldn't make it today. And I just rotated off being chair. So this is the death of a thousand cuts of being chair. I mean, you can't get away from it. Uh, um, uh, being department chair, uh, I mean, we all know that Joe is an outstanding scientist, uh, of course. Uh, but being a, a chair of a department, you learn other sides of your faculty colleagues besides their scientific abilities. Uh, you learn how venal they can really be and how much of a pain in the you-know-what they can really be. Uh, <laughs> And I am happy to say that Joe is not one of those people. <laughs> uh, in, in fact, in, in all seriousness, Joe is uh, one of the few people, I mean, especially given his stature, who has really contributed an enormous amount uh, to, to the physics department here, and even as a permanent member of the KITP. Um, he is one of the, the greatest teachers in the department. Uh, he, uh, while, he, while I was chair, he completely led an effort to just revamp our entire undergraduate curriculum, making it much more modern, much more flexible for our majors, improving time to degree, uh, improving diversity uh, of our undergraduate population, all of these things, and he did this selflessly. And I am extraordinarily grateful to have him around as a colleague. Uh, and I think that I speak for the entire physics department uh, to that effect. And I'm sure I'm echoing. Uh, uh, I'm sure you do just as much work for the KITP for Lars and that he feels the same way. So thank you. It's an honor having you as a colleague. And happy birthday from all of us in the department. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Omer. Okay, so I usually ask uh, how many people have never been in the building before, but Jesse encouraged me to ask a different question. How many people have been in the building 10 times or more? <laughs> okay. Um, so all of you know how programs happen, so I'm going to skip that. Um, I do want to remind every, everybody everything's recorded. Um, so, <laughs> uh, so, And also, please use the microphone for questions. So David, when you're running the first session, you need to run around with the mic like Phil Donahue. Okay. Uh, everything's on the website. If there's a change in schedule, I think so far, is there any change in schedule? There's no change. Okay, not to date. Okay. Great. Um, the talks are 30 minutes, and it, as all of you know who come here, the 15 minutes for discussion is key uh, to the dialogue. And so, uh, David, as the first session chair, uh, will set an excellent example of that. I'm confident. Um, you will get an email about downloading your talks online. So for those of you who are giving talks, it's in your packet, the instructions, but you should also uh, be getting an email about that. Staff are wearing name tags. So uh, Craig is here and Jesse, all of you know. If you have any questions, uh, please speak with them. Uh, there's wireless available in the room. Uh, it's up here, KITP Conf, Airport 1 through 6. That's only so you can collect great jokes to tell about Joe later tonight. Um, please do wear your name tag during the break. We have three KHP programs happening right now, and they're all going to think the food for the, in the courtyard is for them rather than you. And the only way our staff, who unfortunately will have to police it, know that you're part of this gang is if you're wearing your name tag. So please, please do that. Um, if, if you don't have a name tag, just stay close to David. He'll sneak you in. Lenny, okay. <laughs> 
Um, okay, for those of you who drove parkings in lot 10 on the fifth floor, um, you just go to VIP and then you get to pay. It's a rare time where a VIP gets to pay. Uh, and if after 5 o'clock, for example, tonight, if you need re-entry, the building does get locked. So what you have to do is re-enter behind the um, courtyard. There's a big wooden door. That's the caterers will be going in and out that way. Um, if you have plans to bring family or spouse that we don't know about, please speak with Jesse at the first break um, so that we can be sure we're managing that correctly. So we think we've got a head count, but if there's any surprise guests, please let Jesse know as soon as possible. So that's all the announcements I have. I'm going to hand it over to David, who's going to chair the first session and probably say some words. Okay. David. Okay. Um, boy, I'm glad I don't have to do that every other week. <laughs> <laughs> um, when I was deciding whether to leave Princeton 17 years ago, uh, I think it was 17, uh, as you can imagine, it was not an easy decision, especially it was very hard to leave my uh, unbelievable colleagues at Princeton, some, some of whom are here. Um, but one of the things that made it much easier for me to uh, move out here, a decision I have not regretted, uh, was the fact that I knew that uh, Joe Plachinski was here. Now, I'd known of Joe for quite a while as an upcoming young young man in the field. <laughs> in fact, we tried to hire him at Princeton, um, but unfortunately were unable to deal with his two-body problem. So he went off to Texas. And then I was on, I'm trying to figure this out exactly, because you didn't come here. Wh when did you come here? 92. 92. But I, re since Steve Weinberg uh, unfortunately, is not able to come. I know that he wanted very much to come, but he's not going to come. Uh, I think I I will tell a story about Steve and Joe. Uh, when I was uh, chair of the KTP Advisory Board, that was in the late 80s. And at that point, uh, KTP was trying to build up uh, its high energy physics branch in addition to condensed matter physics where it was traditionally very strong. And Joel, Joel Polchinski's name came up. And that put Steve, who was on the board at the time, in a very difficult position. But Steve, being Steve, um, gave one of the most uh, strongest recommendations I've ever heard for anyone uh, for Joel Polchinski. And he, aside from Joe at that time, uh, of course, had done spectacular work on, you know, even when he was um, a postdoc at Harvard on supersymmetric field theories and, and at Texas on uh, a truly novel or, well, a deeper way of looking at uh, effective field theory in the Wilsonian renormalization group flow. But um, what Steve pointed out was that Joe had a quality, which all of us re recognize, but uh, the first time I'd really heard it enunciated, which was that when you read a paper of Joe's or listen to a talk on a field that you think you really understand very well, in fact, one that you might have made major contributions to. <laughs> you realize after the talk that, my God, you didn't understand it. <laughs> <laughs> this kind of quality uh, Steve enormously admired in Joe and thought that that would make him a perfect uh, member of the KITP, of the ITP as it used to be called. And I gave him a very strong endorsement. Now, I forget what happened then. Uh, when the offer was actually made, because it, so history is a bit. But I remember very, I remember very well that recommendation, and I, you know, thinking back, there are a few people like that around. Uh, Sidney Coleman is the one that sticks in my mind, the previous generation. Uh, that quality makes Joe an incredible teacher, mentor colleague and uh, writer of textbooks. And in all those 
aspects, of course, he's had uh, incredible success. It also made him, makes him a, f a fantastic colleague, and uh, and my confidence in the fact that uh, although Santa Barbara perhaps was not as strong in the fields I was most interested in as Princeton at the time, uh, I would never lack a uh, stimulating environment as long as Joe was here, and that turned out to be true. Now, Joe has, uh, as you all know, uh, Joe has um, done very well at Santa Barbara. Uh, this is where his career blossomed and where it continues to blossom. Joe is very worried about going, getting old, you know. He's, uh, it's very strange for a man so young. <laughs> but uh, we all know that he shouldn't worry because any way he should measure his success or contributions or impact, as far as I can tell, uh, it's hard to know wh which is the first negative derivative, but it, I don't think it's the first and probably not even the second. So you shouldn't worry at this point. Uh, I th I'm sure a lot will be said about Joe's contributions to many areas of physics, and they are, they are uh, noted by their breadth from condensed matter physics, cosmology, to quantum field theory, string theory, ADS-CFT. Uh, Joe has a good nose for, for um, finding problems that uh, haven't yet been formulated, making a seminal contribution and then moving on. Um, almost all of his choices in the last decade have been right on the button, except perhaps for the unfortunate preoccupation with the landscape. And <laughs> <laughs> but I'm sure I'll be corrected on that. <laughs> uh, this conference is, is a truly a tribute to Joe's impact on the field, just looking at the range of topics, all of which bear on Joe's you know, have benefited from Joe's contributions and insights and discoveries and, uh, but it also brings together uh, a range of people which is unmatched by most meetings who are not just, who do not just admire Joe but truly respect him for, and not just for his scientific contributions but for his collegiality, his friendship, his, uh, uh, Joe's just a nice guy and, um, and a great colleague. As director, I tried very hard not to burden him, but I knew that whenever I needed some kind, any kind of help really, uh, I could always count on Joe. Uh, it's really been a pleasure to work with you and, uh, and to be your colleague, and and uh, I don't think you have to worry about 60 being the end of anything. I gather uh, Steve Schenker is going to plan his 90th birthday celebration. <laughs> um, a help plan. <laughs> so um, <clears throat> so let's get going. We've already lost five minutes which I won't take from Juan, who will <coughs> start out uh, talking about uh, entanglement and how geometry emerges. And you have half an hour, and then there will be discussion. <laughs>